Welcome to College and Cocktails post mid first round of NCAA championships regionals on Saturday. Our this is our behind the show, behind the show, behind the scenes show that we do every week during the college season and behind the scenes we do every week in the regular season when there's no college and tonight's show is brought to you by jay clark's yellow card Woo! <laughs> <laughs> remember you can listen to this on your favorite podcast player uh directions are in the show notes or in the forum um and this show is rated pg-14 because of feelings you know what's really fun is when um, you make it through Saturday doing college and cocktails and then you're both too sick to do the main show on Monday. I'm giving you guys a little t teaser of what we talked about um, on Saturday in the middle of regionals. And if you want to hear the full college and cocktails, um, just log into the website or join um, Club Gym Nerd and we will be back tomorrow, hopefully healed enough to get through a whole recording. Sorry, this is delayed, but I hope you enjoy this. Do you want to know what goes on on our extra podcast every week or what some people call gymcastic only fans? Here's a little teaser for you. First of all. Okay, first of all, you already mentioned Jay Clark's yellow card from the semifinal. Do we know what it was for? Okay. We don't because everyone's being very <sighs> professional and the no. judges are not. And the thing is the report just goes to the like a committee to review it and you just mark it on the score sheet so you can see it like on Verdius that has yeah. a yellow card mark mm -hmm. spot but um they the actual report about what happened and why they got a yellow card goes is not a public thing so and everyone's well, doing it i mean I college gymnastics but, you don't know anything about marketing then if you're going to keep that quiet right? we want to know what it is you what wanna, did he say and this what is the problem say? With not having people, well, yeah, we need the T Linsers exactly, especially for Linsers. Um, and like, if the commentators were actually there, they could go ask someone to run over on the floor and find out, or mm. they would maybe have a camera person who would have noticed instead of me getting reports from the meet that it was happening, and then was able to confirm it. But I was like, you guys, yellow cards, very exciting. Let's stay on top of this. Very exciting. Can I tell you question? Like, yes, I have. Then I want to tell you a yellow card story that I've heard. Okay. Do they do it like soccer? Like, does the judge have to hold up the yellow card for everyone to see? Yes. <sighs> yeah. Who was who was in the stands recording this moment? I know, you guys. I feel like there's less recording now because it's actually on TV. So just, if there's no reason to. Yeah. <laughs> they just rip whatever they need. That would be there. why. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so some examples. So it can be anything from like literally threatening a judge or like mm -hmm. hovering over them to something as innocuous as seeing a score that's not mathematically possible and mm. just saying to yourself within earshot of the judges what the fuck you can get a yellow card for that so yeah. even if it's totally like, wrong and the judges are wrong if you can get a yellow card if you did always get a yellow card for that there would be yellow cards in every single meet <laughs> Like, because one of the things that you can do to get a yellow card is object to an official's decision by words, expressions, gestures, body language. And I'm like, okay, that's every coach and gymnast after every root score that has ever been posted. So that's why I'm assuming, like, it had to be something a little more, right? The, I mean, the vault and bars spotting coaches are the most in danger of this. Mm -hmm. Unless you're a hover. Like, Grand Marsden used to always get them for hovering behind the judges um but yeah. yeah it's surprising these aren't given out more um but i was just like oh jay are you upset you're getting realistic scoring suddenly and not home meet scoring <laughs> because everyone is being scored like today the day that it happened a, a little more accurately than they were in their home scoring slightly i, I think it's it's an illusion because they weren't giving out as many tens but mm -hmm. they didn't let that trickle into the non 10 quality routines. I think we're being scored the same. They were just like, let's not give out as many 10. So just everything is more the same, which was fun for me. Mm -hmm. that's, my, felt, that's my feeling about it. Uh, I felt like it was um, more realistic for some teams, but then again, like more realistic for, Oh, you like they had a terrible first meet, but it was still like so much better than everybody else. Like, so yeah. they still got a 198, even though for yeah, them so it was awful. This is my point. They still yeah. got a 198. With, yeah. You know, it was still fine. It was still better than everyone else. It was like, eh, 
And then I thought they were going to come back today and just be like, we are going to get a 2000 because we're so mad about yesterday. And they started like that on beam, but then I don't know, vault, some things happened. They're still going to, they're still going to be pissed. They're still going to be pissed about this one. I didn't, you think LSU was going to LSU when they had a fall in the first spot on bars. Yes. I feel I like, like if they end up somehow beating Oklahoma at nationals in the final, um, that we're going to talk about this where it's like, oh, LSU didn't LSU. Right. It will be. They yeah. Because you know. they always. They, they've they they've come in. They might. Have they come in second the most of any team ever? We'll have to look that so. up. If you know, I like second, to think of things. Like, I have no idea. Utah yeah. has also come in second. Like, um, like for a while, it was every time they didn't win, they came in second. So I would assume like Utah has come in second a lot more than LSU. Speaking of Utah, did you see Greg Marsden's tweet? Perhaps a uh, fact checker can pull it up for us. It is the you know how they're using that um, the Mount Rushmore of the most winningest coaches. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and. It, if they have him second with nine, even though they won a million times before the <laughs> Do NCAA. not tell a Utah person they only have nine. They will cut you they in the They will eye. cut you. I mean, I see the point. It's not their fault the NCAA was totally sexist. They won a national championship before the NCAA existed. It was the same teams doing the same gymnastics, so I think it's a totally fair argument. Yeah, it's literally the same team. The same people on the team. Um, Anywho, he said <laughs> something about, like, Ah, they stole that land from the Lakota Nation and carved or superimposed <laughs> my face onto the mountain without my consent. I might add, what about NIL? Oh, it's so well, great. Well, that's truly an excellent move. <laughs> yes. So good. So good. Um, okay. Did you... Th- okay, what were the biggest surprises to you of the teams that are out? Who was the biggest shock for you? Penn State going over Michigan. Into the regional Michigan final. Michigan was the yeah, that was the most surprising to me. Not because we hadn't seen the signs from Michigan this season, but I thought they had a comfortable enough semifinal that they could be kind of and kind of fall on beam again and still get through. So that was the surprise to me. Whereas like UCLA going out, I was like, another case where like we've seen the signs this year. If you t- went back to when we recorded our preview and you were like, you were like, actually, UCLA kind of got a lot of nine sevens and fell apart and lost. I'd be like, oh, I can see it. I mean, what is it? The UCLA has shown the capability to not make it about Tom Carrie. Forster, about Carrie. Yeah. Yeah. She has shown the ability to leave. I think Stanford beating Auburn. Hmm. Be- and it's not like Auburn. I was like, oh, they might, they might not make it like but I thought they'd probably advance. But Stanford was just like, we were busy being nerds because it's nerd nation this entire <laughs> time. And we strategized. So we didn't have to pay that much attention to gymnastics until right now. So now we're going to try. <laughs> but the rest of the time, like, yeah. what's the point? It's Stanford a good strategy. Why, why bother with 12 meets in a row when you can just wait until regionals and be perfect? Like, smart. That's what I'm saying. Their strategy worked. It's the Stanford strategy. Yeah. I was very, I, they were just so magnificent. Do you think they're going to advance to nationals? If they compete like they did last night? Yes. Who do they have to beat? They just have to beat. Well, they have uh, Cal and Denver and um, Arizona State. Well, and they're going to, so yeah, they have to, yeah, they could beat Denver and I mean, they could beat Denver and Arizona State. That's possible. They do what they did last night. Possible based on the performances yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Who impressed you the most of the teams that didn't make it? Um, I had a lot of teams that impressed me who did not make it. I think that even today, like Penn State has done super well. Great competitions throughout. I thought they really stepped up their level. Um, I really enjoyed watching Iowa State in this. They qualified over Clemson, and I really enjoyed watching their competition in the regional semifinals especially attention to like doing things not to get away with them like they weren't cheating their leaps on floor they were doing like i'm going to do actually intentionally switch side half to straddle jump instead of switch side quarter to straddle three quarters and i was like that's the building block that i think is compelling like give this coaching staff like 10 years and 
you know, because it takes a long time to do that. But I yeah. liked the intention and where they're starting from. So that was one of the things. What about you? I think Penn State, for me, was mm-hmm. the most impressive. Just they're just so clean. They're clean. And I enjoy that. And they have some great difficulty. They've got a double Arabian, you know, they got, you know, and I just love Sarah of the Shire too. Um, yeah, I'm excited for them. I, I always think about like, well, why can't they recruit? And I'm just like, it, they have great gymnasts. Like KJ didn't recruit a bunch of elites. Like she recruited Ninja level tens and that's all you need. But then I'm just like, but who wants to live in state college, Pennsylvania? Like it literally <laughs> doesn't even have its own identity. The town is called state college and it's in the middle of nowhere. Like it's not even close to Philadelphia or close to Pittsburgh or something. It's just like pfft, nothing. But I mean, some people like that kind of thing. You know, I would freaking pull my hair out. But if that's what oh, you're really? into. You would? <laughs> no, it's I was not clear from everything. It's shocking else. that everybody yeah. isn't exactly like me. I know. Yeah, that's so weird. Um, I Why hasn't there been a um, meme started about Reagan's Kleenex box replacing her bead bowl? <laughs> Where... oh, poor Reagan and that stupid Andrea Joyce bead box. <laughs> Gosh, they should have left her alone and been like, no, you're not allowed to do this. It's our little inside joke. So because elite training is really. Yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. Jennifer says Ohio State did so well. Yeah. Yeah. Really strong competition. Like they came in unseated because they kind of like started well and then sort of stayed at the same level. while Everyone else got crazy and they came in unseated. But they were like, no, we're actually the team in this one. And we deserve to go through. Really happy to see Courtney McCann hit her um, two-footed layout on beam back in the lineup because she was she got that 995 in the very first week and then fell week after week after week. And I felt so bad. And mm-hmm. now she's back in the lineup and hit it. And I think that was a really positive moment. And especially looking forward for I- Ohio State because she's just a freshman. Yeah, they're another team that's like very much up and coming. Like when Anastasia Webb was like, Kentucky, it'll be good for them in the future. And I was like, they're already like right there. They're not a Ohio State data in the future. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We need to talk about Anastasia Webb's commentary. Yeah, I just like I want women need to use their authentic voice. Like it is so important. Well, you felt like it was like a Republican rebuttal to the State of the Union situation. Yeah, and I don't know if that's intentional or she was coached that way to do it or that's just what she thinks she should be doing. But for me, it read kindergarten teacher. And for me, it read I am not confident. And as the analyst, you're supposed to be the expert. So I want to hear you, you know, and you know me, I've never had a problem with that. And I was literally raised to despise that. Like I had a best friend in school who would, every time she would raise her hand, she would be like, um, is it, you know, 75, the answer? And literally would do that. Her normal voice was normal. And she would do that in class. And I'd be like, why are you doing that? You're smart, goddammit. So we're not friends anymore. I was a little too aggressive. (laughs) Yeah, that's the moral of that story, Jessica. I enjoyed hearing... um, It was fourth grade, okay? I enjoyed hearing Anastasia Webb's analysis of what especially her answers to like the insight i guess into the oklahoma training style yes. and her analysis of routines i enjoyed when the other commentator would ask her questions like there was something about where he said and now is that something you would practice and she literally laughed she was like <laughs> because of like can you imagine how much an oklahoma team practices that like every right. move and every moment on beam and it was like yes i practice it constantly and so much and i liked the insights of being on the Oklahoma team and just what that is like and why they are, you know, able to hit usually so much better and more consistently than everyone else. And they just came up in that beam rotation today. We're just like, this is perfect. Goodbye. Except Reagan had a wobble and still got a nine, nine, seven, five, the 10 from some judges. (gasps) But other than that, it was a beautiful beam rotation. That's the thing. I felt like they so much of what I loved about like Maldonado's commentary and even Kennedy was more like this in the beginning when she started was like, oh, you're getting their perspective as an athlete, which is what makes them so special to hear from. And I felt like there was so little of that from mm. um, Webb. So I wanted I wanted I more got of some that. of it. I kind of like that. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk about that competition because it was fun. LSU, Kentucky, Arkansas, Shit. Minnesota. That is That is what we're looking for. I felt like I've been kind of, this season, even though there's great routines, I felt kind of like, sometimes when we're talking about it, I'm like, what is there left to say? Yeah. 
Like, I don't have anything left to say. And now I'm like, okay, I'm excited about this again because we're in the elimination meets and it like actually matters what you do in your routine and who wins. And yeah, I thought Minnesota, I was, even though they, you know, got eliminated there, I was very impressed at how they brought it and stayed right with all of the other teams. Um, yep. I thought Kentucky was going to advance. Wait, did you see Eli's shirt? His gold. That was excellent. Or satin was, gold shirt, tr- Eli. Truly was, excellent. Once again. Yeah. Yes, we appreciate you. That got Minnesota at least two extra tenths on bars. And I'm just going to say it. Um, I, you know, going in, I thought Kentucky was going to win. And then I was ready for, you know, if Arkansas advanced to kind of feel like home scoring, home gym advantage. But I do think they had overall a stronger competition than Kentucky did. Especially those three big pretty big beam wobbles that Kentucky had that still all scored above 98 cuz everything scored above 98 on beam cuz everything's fine um but yeah they were just kind of Kentucky didn't have a bad competition but they weren't really sticking they were giving away bounces they were giving away landings in a lot of places and i did feel like yeah that was the right order i this is the thing the whole time I was watching this whole weekend, I was like, this is so exciting. Like I'm having so much fun watching, watching because there's stakes. Like it matters. Every mm-hmm. single thing matters. Every single routine matters. We already had a tie break. So like, I just, I wish more of the season was this and not one weekend. We literally get one mm-hmm. weekend like this and then it's championships. Yeah. It's one meet and then it's over. Like I want this to just be backed up. Mm-hmm. and have it go at least three weeks like this until championships weekend and i think at least the model is shorten the regular season by a few meets and then you can have enough weeks to have an actual like dual meet knockout tournament of a postseason rather than quad meets and i think that that's kind of because otherwise you just don't have time and space to have a bunch of dual meets that which are really exciting if you were just head to head knock out like, you know, a sports ball or something, but it's kind of difficult to do for gymnastics. But if you shortened the regular season, you could add those weeks and that time to have knockout meets. Even if you end up having to have them at a neutral venue, you can have that neutral venue or other neutral venues for longer. In other sports. I mean, well, I mean, when you do gymnastics competitively before you get to college, you only compete like five or six times in your mm-hmm. season. So it's not like, and you would get harder gymnastics because I feel like you'd be less beat up. Um, and you shouldn't have just conference championships or everybody show up. Like, what is this? This isn't peewee baseball or whatever they call it. <laughs> From Arkansas Regional, the individual qualifiers are all around Jade Carey, Vault Maya Hooten, Bars Courtney Blackson, love that, Beam Isabella Magnelli and Floor Raina Worley. That was the thing, the floor qualifier for this one. But R- Kentucky was knocked out. So it's good that it's Raina Worley if Kentucky's going to be knocked out. That's a deserving qualifier. And I'm glad Maya Hooten is going to nationals, even though you yeah. would have expected it to be for floor. It's nice that she's going. Jade Carey, of course, for the all around. I love Magnelli's beam. So I'm really happy with those individual qualifiers. Maya Hooten's bars, I was like, that should be like a 9 7. At the what? highest, <laughs> I was like, "What is Jessica, this?" Like, I we what did literally. She do on bars? I kind of don't remember. She like overarched. She piked. She missed a handstand. She was like, it mm. was not good. I was like, "Oh, this is not." They really need a great bars. Oh, I mean, she held it together, but you know, I mean, LSU yeah. also didn't have. Uh, they had a really bad bar rotation. Like everyone had, well, except Haley Bryant, because you know she's perfect. But everybody made mistakes, which not their normal. Yeah. Um, but. I like when totally... Connor got nine nine five on bars with a step on her dismount, which is a minimum one tenth. Right. <laughs> I was just like, "What the hell?" I mean, you know, it's ridiculous. But um, I was just going to compare Jordan Bowers because we always talk about um, Maya Hooten and how Maya Hooten's front pass, where she rises on the last mm-hmm, front flip, mm-hmm. is so good, and it's an example of why everyone else should be getting a deduction when it doesn't rise. Um, and then Jordan Bowers did the same thing today on her first pass. Ex- example of like rising in your second flip and then a controlled lunge. She landed and then stepped forward. She was so Raina Worley with her mm-hmm. stick and then step. Um, also, did Audrey Davis almost land her bar dismount sideways? It literally looked like she today was. Today I, I missed her bars. <laughs> you guys, did you see that? At first she landed. I was like, oh, 
Like, it looks like a side, I mean, it usually looks like a side flip, and then she quick turns it around at the end, but it, like, almost looked like she didn't make it. And maybe it was just the terrible angle, because we were watching straight on a bar dismount. Oh, my God. <gasps> oh, my God. Okay, have we debriefed over UCLA not making it yet? Mara says. Still sitting here in my UCLA gymnastics sweatshirt, eating ice cream, LOL. Glad we are talking through this chaos as a family. I yeah. know. UCLA, you, like Michigan... You have that in your control. It's I loved what made me feel good about their loss was that Selena Harris was so mad that this will never happen again. Like her utter disgust Mm -hmm. is exactly what you need to change the culture of a team to be like our it's not to be shitty to people. It's our expectation is not where we have been. Our expectation Mm -hmm. is higher that's what we want to see all the time. So it becomes your normal and your default, almost like Oklahoma. Um, mm-hmm. That's what I would like to see. Uh, I know. I thought I was interested. I did see online people were like, oh, is Selena Harris going to transfer because she's liking tweets that are really critical of UCLA? I'm like, I don't know what her life, like, I don't know her life. I don't know her plans. But I'm like, I hope everyone on UCLA's team feels like that and is having that conversation with each other. Yeah. Like you were saying, because, like, you know, being a good teammate doesn't mean being supportive all the time. Yeah. That's part of it. But like you also have to be a like a have cultivated the enough trust to be a dick to each other. Yes. That's this also is very like true. That's, you don't get good unless you're holding each other accountable for your performances and you're saying to each other like that was not good enough. Right. We can't do that again. Blowing smoke up everyone's ass constantly is not a good environment. That you need it's honesty. You need to have real relationships where you can be like, huh. what do you think about gymnastics? <laughs> you need honesty. You need to be able to say, this is a really ugly floor routine. Claire oh. says, a world without Brooklyn Moores at Nationals is a world I am terrified of. Yeah. This is the biggest atrocity <laughs> that has happened in gymnastics this year, period. If you like what you heard, Get more by joining Club Gymnerd at gymcasket.com.